Is it must see Thursday back in the 80s? Because I saw the Cosby Show. You are Locked On Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody, and welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me, Jimmy Stein, that's him. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. I'll talk about FanDuel here in just a little bit. I'm coming to you live from Watertown, New York. The um, Hughes. Yeah, yesterday I was in Birmingham calling the HSA games. going to talk about that in a second. But um, <clears throat> I am now in Watertown, but I had to call, I had to stop and and talk about this big Alabama win last night, Jimmy. That was absolutely huge. Alabama, I don't even know what's more unbelievable, that Alabama comes back from a 14-point deficit with five minutes to go in the first. They almost tie it going into half. They end up winning by 14, 15. I can't remember exactly what it was. Uh, or Davin Cosby um, having five three-pointers out of nowhere or Aaron Estrada having a triple-double, only the fourth in program history, or Mark Sears tying James Hollywood Robinson for a number of 20-point-plus games in a season, or Alabama tying the early Kentucky's team for most 100-point games in SEC season with nine. I mean, it's there was so much that was unbelievable. I, I don't even know where to start. First of all, I want to start with this. Uh, the Thursday night must-see NBC lineup. Uh, that was a long time ago now, but was it roughly, if I remember right, Was does this sound right? The Cosby Show at 7, yep. Central Time. Cosby Show at 7. Maybe Family Ties at 7.30? Does that sound Family right? Family Ties was in there somewhere, but there were, I know Night Court and Cheers were involved. Night Court and Cheers was like 8 and 8.30. Was yeah. the 9 o'clock, sh- was it ER or was that – this Nine o'clock for ER for sure. Was, yeah, was it ER it was. for sure? Okay. I think it also might have been LA Law. LA Law. LA Law, yeah, point. it could have been. At some point. But I just remember, I mean, I was a Thursday night NBC groupie. Everyone listening to the show right now is probably like that, you know, it obsessed with cable and streaming and stuff like that. But the network shows used to be a big deal when we were growing up. If it was yeah. on the network, it was a it was a thing. Um, I think I'm ready to say, Luke. This is the greatest offensive team in Alabama history. I mean, it's the best offensive team we've ever had. I mean, uh, I've seen one stat. I wish I could quote it. Uh, I'm still so stunned from it. I can't even recall it uh, because I about fainted when I read it. But something that says Alabama is the second most efficient offense in college basketball since 1999. So not just the best offense in school history, we're one of the best offenses in college basketball of the last 20 years. That is just stunning. And, and I know any, any negative Nelly is going to say, yeah, but what about the defense? I'm not talking about the defense right now. I'm talk- Can't we just talk about the offense for, for a minute? And uh, it, it literally is. I, I, it's the best offense in the history of Alabama basketball. And you just went over several of the records that were set last night. But uh, I think there was a big chunk of the game Luke, where Alabama was on like a hundred and thirty point pace. Yeah, I mean, I think they half. played that way over over, <laughs> over forty minutes. Uh, just nuts. And um, I know Davin Cosby is going to get a lot of attention today, and deservedly so. But the guy I really want to brag about is Aaron Estrada. I mean, the uh, the fourth triple double in Alabama school history last night, and Estrada was everywhere doing everything. And then, in addition to the triple double, picks up the hard hat, you know, in the locker room. Uh, on the way out. So just a fantastic performance by Alabama. I know it got off to a rough start. Welcome to playing on the road in the SEC. That's all that is, is just it's hard to play well on the road. And, And Luke, whoever wins the SEC, maybe it's Alabama, maybe it's Tennessee, maybe somebody comes from behind. But whoever wins the SEC and is SEC champion forever, that team did not play great for 40 minutes in 18 SEC games. No one does that. Yet some of our fans want to hold us to that standard. You must play great for all 40 minutes of all 18 games or you're not good. What, what, what the heck, man? That's just not living within the bounds of reality. Uh, the team is going to struggle, and they'll struggle Saturday to beat Tennessee. 
uh, because the team has some issues on the other side of the ball. Uh, but offensively, Luke, this is a freaking juggernaut. I'm just hoping that uh, they can set the place on fire, not literally, of course, on Saturday um, with some scorching shooting. I, I mean, look, I hope that the second half carries over. I would love to see us have a full game of fantastic shooting. And because if we did that, we'd be the one scoring 117 points. <laughs> yeah. I don't think there's any doubt in my mind. <clears throat> um, it's um, it, it really was phenomenal to watch last night. Rylan Griffin, um, he got, to, I think, a, maybe a, an intentional foul or flagrant one or whatever. Um, yeah. And it was a little bit silly. I mean, he just sort of, I mean, boy, I'm like, y'all don't sit. Alan Flanagan, and you're going to call that? I mean, you're giving me a break. But um, Nate Oates got the weirdest technical I've ever seen. Um, he's yeah. sitting there calmly talking to the official. Now, maybe he said, hey, your mama wears combat boots very, just very nicely. I don't know. I think it was like a makeup call. That's my, my – I think the officials were like, God, we should have teed him up a second ago. We should have teed him up, and we should – I can't believe we didn't. That was a big mistake on our part. If he even looks at me wrong. And then Nate just looked at him. <laughs> and that I, was that. The announcers were even in disbelief, like that looked like a pleasant conversation. You know, um, it's almost like when you're talking to a cop and they pull you over and you're like, hey, officer, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. He goes, I know so these things happen, buddy. And then you're like, no, OK, good. And he goes, now, here's your ticket. And you're like, wait a minute. We, we were just we were having a moment. Yeah. Um, I think I've so, only gotten about three tickets. <laughs> Do you know how many tickets you've gotten? Oh God, I don't want to talk about it. Okay, I think I've gotten three. That's pretty good. Um, I think I've gotten a bunch. I, I mean, I'm practically a scalper at this point. Um, <laughs> but um, you know, so that was a huge win last night, and now I mean, this game Saturday just sets up to be so tremendous. I mean, there's there's just not another way to put it. Game day's already coming into town now. We need the biggest crowd we can possibly have for both game day and for the game itself. Uh, Tennessee got a big win against Auburn. Dalton Connect is just a thing. He's a problem. I don't know how in the world we're going to guard him. We didn't really guard him the first time, and we don't really guard anyway. But what we have to do is just outshoot them, outscore them, and get them into our contest. Tennessee is so full of men. Now, we've got dudes, too. Don't get me wrong. But our guys look younger than Tennessee's guys. I mean, Tennessee's guys look like they're 24 to 26 years old. Our guys look 17 to 19. I mean, Jaron Stevenson, he should be a senior in high school. Um, Mark Sears, I mean, he's got he's a little grizzled. He's a grizzled veteran. But um, I would say Rylan Griffin got sort of a baby face, right? And there's nobody on Tennessee that has a baby face. Everybody's got old uh, man face. Uh, I don't know. Dalton Connect to me isn't. I mean, he doesn't look like a freshman, and he's not. He's a senior, isn't he? No, isn't Dalton he? Connect looks like he's been playing overseas for 10 years to me. Well, I mean, but he's, he's got the body of an NBA player, and, and I think he's a fantastic NBA prospect. When I watch him, I don't know where he's at on these uh, mocks, but when I watch Dalton Connect, I'm like, the NBA has to love this guy. <laughs> I mean, well, he's, uh, somebody he's, last night said he'd go first in the – I don't know if he'll go first, but – I'm sure um, it'll be uh, – I think it's a tall good. French guy that'll go first, and I know that sounds like a stereotype now based on what happened with Wimben Yama last year, but I think literally there is another tall French so guy too. that's going to go first. I mean, <laughs> but, uh, new but, cheese but Dalton Connect – I just watch Connect, and I'm like, he is the quintessential NBA two guard. Yeah. I mean, straight out of central casting, and I know that sounds – Crazy because because maybe he's not, but I'm just saying his his height, his shot, his body, uh, he can rebound. Uh, you know, uh, I, 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 he's a great player. I hate that he's probably going to take Mark Sears Player of the Year, you know, award. Sears has earned it. Sears has earned Player of the Year, but so has Connect, and only one of them can win it. And I get it if it's him. If if Sears puts on a show Saturday, I think it'll be close. I still yeah. favor Connect. But if Sears puts on a show and Bama wins the regular season, ultimately, now it'll be tight. People will just give him votes on since that best player on the best team. I mean, Bruce Pearl I said so yesterday. <laughs> Bruce Pearl was asked about it, and to his credit, Bruce Pearl said, uh, "If Tennessee wins the league, I'm voting for Connect, and if Alabama wins the league, I'm voting for Sears." And while I'm not a fan of of that line of thinking, I appreciate Bruce Pearl telling everybody what his line of thinking yeah. is because that's some rare coaching honesty there 
and cool for him that he would vote for the Alabama guy and not be a fan and not be all, oh, I'm never voting for the Alabama guy because that's the school down the road. Uh, I, I would I would certainly vote for Janai Broom to be first team all SEC. Oh, there's no doubt. He's, 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 he's so much better than people want to give him credit for. It's not And, yeah. and not pull a Gus Malzahn who voted Alabama like, what, 10th or 12th or something in the last AP poll, something ridiculous. But anyway, Jimmy, uh, right now I want to tell everybody about eBay Motors. You know, we love eBay Motors over here at Locked On Bama. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and much more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered, baby. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your guaranteed fit is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber. You ain't burning cash, bruh. With all the parts you need at the price you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions. They do apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Um, want to give Aaron Estrada his flowers, too, because he did get only the four triple-double in – uh, Alabama team history. I'm going to assume, though, that we haven't been keeping up with triple doubles. Maybe I mean, not for. Okay, this is what bothers me. There's a there's a the records in the NBA um, are skewed in the sense that they said, well, we didn't record triple doubles back when Oscar Robertson was playing or whatever. Even though I think he may have averaged a triple double, and. I'm like, yeah, but you have the stats. You have the stats. You can go back and well, do just this. do it. Don't they have like one stats guy that like just hired like the new guy? Hey, new guy. Yeah. Guess what you have to do? You have to go back and check every box score that's ever been. <laughs> you have to go back and 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 because we're going to recreate. Yeah, it'd be easy to check. It'd be easy to check at Alabama, though. Me and you just you, our schedule just simply does not allow it. We're very there's somebody out there busy celebrities, celebrities um, now, and there's photo shoots and award shows that we have to do the award circuit and uh and speeches to big corporations uh okay so aaron estrada triple double number four in bama history allegedly um uh, Roy rogers had triple he had two of them doubles. and you know who the other one was there was only two I, I would have guessed there were more in his third it was point three bounds of block shots mm-hmm. if, if it yeah now do you know who the other one was uh, Hori, and I think it's pronounced Ori. <laughs> yeah, when you, <laughs> I, I will not make a joke where... here. Uh, uh, I have this weird thing where I see it. I, see, I guess I'm like the like the, my sixth sense is I see words before I say them. There is an H there, Robert Ori. There's an H right there in front of your. Uh, it is. It, the H is silent. And if uh, and if it is pronounced Hori. It certainly gives new meaning to the term "big shot Bob," but um, anyway, uh, no. The other one was Kyra Lewis in 2020, and why in the heck I don't remember that? I don't know. Kyra Lewis had a triple double. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I just didn't remember it. He should go in the first round. <laughs> well, he is still playing, so that's positive. <clears throat> he played for the Jazz. I think he got moved around recently. He did get moved around. He is with the Jazz. I believe he's with yeah with Colin Sexton and the Jazz now. I believe that's correct. Nice. Um, but Aaron Estrada, at, you know, Cosby, how about coming in? You know, and how about Nate Oates doing this? I appreciate this. Nate Oates said, um, you know, he played so well in practice the other day simulating an Ole Miss player that um, I said, you're going to play. And so we put him in, and what did he do? He delivered. It was awesome yeah. to see. And it's just awesome that – you know, because this is one of those guys that you worry about, like, oh, my God, is he going to transfer and we want to find somebody in the portal for something? You know, and maybe this is the kind of thing that leads him to, like, hey, I can come back here and I can I can be good here. And maybe it also gives Alabama fans confidence in him. It also makes me feel a lot better about our depth. So, uh, Davin Cosby, nice work. Nick Pringle, was his yeah, plus Pringle was out of control. He played um, well in the second half for sure. Um, and, and and then, of course, Alan Flanagan, who shouldn't have been playing, gets 28 points, but whatever. Boy, his little turnaround jumper where he, 
when he elevates on that turnaround, man, the NBA has me going, whoa, whoa. All we'll right. Pay, let me, we'll pay somebody well to do that. Let me add in a couple of things here really quickly. Yesterday, I got the, the pleasure of calling Caleb Holt oh, yeah. for Buckhorn. He is a thing. He is a problem. Jimmy, he didn't score in the first quarter. He ended up with 37 points. I think he had like eight quarters. rebounds, six, maybe maybe six steals or six assists, a couple of blocks. Um, just and absolutely. Against good competition, too, obviously. Or it wouldn't, wouldn't yeah, I mean, it, it was good competition. And now they move on to play Mountain Brook uh, on Saturday. And uh, that's going to be a, a – I mean, what an event that's going to be. I'm calling games all day Saturday. That's the one game I'm not calling because we have a three-man rotation. And I'm kind of glad because I just get to sit back and watch that one. And um, there'll be a huge contingent of folks there. And Mountain Brook will be there in their neon green, get the Legacy Arena. You will absolutely love this. I promise you, Caleb Holt will put on a show for you. But Mountain Brook's pretty fun, too. Ty Davis, the son of the coach. Um, he's Brayton. headed to Clayton. Yeah. Brayton. A good player. Uh, he ended up fouling out. Uh, in their game against Carver Montgomery. And um, he uh, Carver had a shot to tie it late, though, improbably. They had a t- chance to send it to OT, and they missed their free throws. So they didn't get to do it. Now, today, I, did, I obviously wasn't calling this game because I'm in New York, but my buddies for the HSA Radio Network were calling it the Hoover game. And Dwayne Brown, who – three-star slash four-star center. I think he's about to be universally a four-star after today. He had 20-some-odd points, 10 of six from the field, couple of three-pointers, um, several rebounds, uh, just a dominant in the post, 6'9", about 250, 260, just so hard to handle. That's enormous. That's an enormous yeah. dude for high school basketball, just enormous. So Hoover wins, and uh, they will move on to play for a state championship with, against a team to be determined here a little bit later on this afternoon. But – uh, Leah Brooks, who plays for Hazel Green, I got to call her yesterday, and um, she is committed and signed with Alabama. I believe she's already signed, and um, good player. And Hazel Green's going for their seventh straight state championship. I mean, that's just absolutely it's a lot. It's a lot of them. Um, and the, yeah, uh, so a lot the of fun. UCLA of Alabama girls, four A basketball or whatever it is, four A, three A, somewhere in there. Yeah, they are maybe even two A, six A, think six A, say. yeah, six A. Got uh, Jimmy. I mean, I I'm telling you, these things run together. I call. Well, they also eight, change every three years. That's true. I called eight games in two days. My voice is gone, as you can tell. I'm trying really hard not to talk, except for this podcast, because I need to save it for Saturday. But um, all right, we're going to talk about FanDuel now, and then when we come back, Jimmy's going to give us some offensive line prospects to think about. FanDuel is the absolute best. You want to go check them out. Love FanDuel. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. And if you had taken the tide last night, it would have won. Bet on all your favorite NBA players or college basketball, whatever, and teams with Quick bets or live same game parlays, exclusive props, and much, 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 much more. Just visit fanduel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot today. Fanduel.com is an official sports book partner of the NBA. The NBA. So, uh, Bama Online, the site you work for, Jimmy. Uh, mm-hmm. Or do you own it now? Do you own it? Oh, <laughs> No, no, that's Tim Watts. Tim Watts, the CEO, the boss. All right, well, they put I, out I just a watch the, of, I wash the windows. <laughs> you are the Butch Jones of Bama <laughs> I do. Uh, so, I fetch Tim his coffee, and it's a tough job because he lives in Alabaster, and I'm in Tuscaloosa. <laughs> All right, so here are the offensive line prospects that uh, they put that, that Alabama is probably most associated with right now. This list is sure to grow. One thing that excites me about it is there's only one three-star, and that's Mal Waldrop, who plays for Central Phoenix City, oddly, who Hoover beat today to go on to the state championship. And Central Phoenix City, I didn't know this till today, they've never won a state basketball championship in, on the boys' side. I found that I believe. ridiculous. But anyway. It's such a big school. With all, and and it's such a rich history of athletes. Athletes. Yeah. yeah it's such a lot of great athletes. I mean, gosh, that is stunning. Yeah, Waldrop. Yeah, we'll talk about him, among others. 
So Mal Waldrop is the only three star. Then there's David Sanders, who, you know, a lot of people think could be the best prospect in this class, potentially, or at least mm-hmm. best offensive line prospect in this class. Then Andrew Babalolia. Babalolia. Like okay. The, the uh, Babalola dude from Kansas. Kansas, yeah. Uh, Jackson Lloyd from uh, Carmel, California. And I believe they say Carmel, California, and it's Carmel, Indiana. Or it's, I got it reversed. I can't remember what they do. Michael Carroll from uh, Pennsylvania. Mika DeBose from Pritchard. We've talked about him a gazillion times. Hardy Watts from Massachusetts. That's an interesting one. He's the number 16 interior lineman. So these guys are from all over the place. And Alabama's involved with a lot of them, and most of them are either four stars or in the top 100, and there's one five-star there. So what do you think about Alabama's shots with the, with those guys? Yeah, yeah, it's really early for these type lists, and Andrew Bone went over that. You know, it's really early because there's going to be – offensive line is a position where you really want to evaluate these guys in camp. So Alabama did not offer two offensive linemen that ended up signing with Alabama until June – of last summer. So, I mean, so you got to put yourself on that timeline. It's really a summer thing. Uh, in terms of these big names, you know, Sanders, we'll start off with, with if you want to call it bad news, Sanders was uh, was strongly in, in the picture for Alabama, but he seems to have lost a little interest since the Saban retirement. That's fine. Uh, it's not that Alabama can't get back in on him. He still is listening. But I, I wouldn't say that Alabama's in the same shape for Sanders under the new staff they were with the old staff. But now to the good news. Uh, one is that that Andrew Babaloa kid from from Kansas. Uh, he was not someone that was being heavily recruited by the old staff. He likes the new staff a lot and may sign with, may eventually commit to Alabama. And he is a national elite prospect. He's one of the most highly rated guys out there. Even more impressively to me, Luke, is Jackson Lloyd from California. That's real interesting. You know, when Alabama's new staff, they were recruiting him when they were at Washington. Uh, and offered him there at Washington. He was a three a three star that doesn't really look the part when you just look at the mug shot, you know, as I call it jokingly. Uh, you know, when you're just looking at him, you're like, okay, three star, and and sure. And then DeBoer staff comes to Alabama. He's like the first guy they offer once they get to Alabama, like the first guy. And a lot of people on our border, some fans really question that. They're like, this is the guy, this is the famous first guy you offer, a three-star from California. Well, it's what people, what I talk about all the time, Luke, is there's a process to these this evaluation that takes a full year. People are like, compl- it's like complaining about a movie five minutes in. <laughs> I mean, give it some time. This is five minutes in. And uh, so now fast forward only a month. Jackson Lloyd is now called by on three, the number one player in the West, the number one player, not the number one offensive lineman, the most highly ranked player in the Western United States. And and people early on were like, oh, this is a great, it just goes to show that the football staffs work so hard around the clock that sometimes they get ahead of the recruiting industry in terms of where kids are ranked or where they should be ranked. This is DeBoer and his staff outworking everyone else and finding him and and ends up this kid is going to be a universal five-star type as an offensive tackle. And he likes Alabama because DeBoer and Washington have been recruiting him for a long time. So that's just to show how well maybe not work out with Sanders, but you might end up with Babalow, you might end up with Jackson Lloyd. Micah Debo's that's going to be one that you're going to have to watch all the way to signing day. I think he's going to be, you know, at one point it was Georgia, at one point it was Alabama, at one point it was Auburn, now it's LSU. Uh, we'll, we'll see with him. Good prospect. He's fallen in the early rankings, came out in the 150s, I think, 140s, 150s in the initial rankings. That's lower than what a lot of us thought, but I get it. You know, he was also at a camp where he was observed by a lot of the analysts, and uh, he just looks more like a, a four-star and not a – you know, crazy five-star level kid like Sanders or Lloyd. I'll say there's some other interesting guys in state that no one's talking about yet. Let's see where they are once the evaluations really start. Cardi Smith from Williamson and Mobile, I think, has got a chance to be very highly recruited. 6'6", 290 at Williamson's. Got an A&M offer, got an Auburn offer. Uh, I think he's a riser. Uh, There's another kid at Williamson, too, that's an offensive lineman that got a Troy offer yesterday that I think is going to end up being a thing. Uh, Mal Waldrop from Central Phoenix City, 
I think he's going to have to earn it in camp. But isn't that great? Isn't that what we want? You know, okay, come to camp and prove it, and, and you'll get your spot. He's a legacy guy. His dad, I think, was a, was a player at Alabama or walk-on or, or some sorts. I don't remember, uh, but I know Mal Waldrop has some significance to Alabama and any kid named Mal you would think Alabama is going to get if they want him. <laughs> uh, so that's interesting. And, again, uh, another couple of in-state guys – that I think they'll look at at camp. There's an in-state kid from Athens that's committed to Auburn that's uh, certainly interesting. And uh, and there, there, there's a big kid in Mississippi, I think from Laurel. Uh, so we'll see. It's early, but these early lists are a lot of fun, and it's a good chance for us to learn all the new names uh, that are out there. So uh, I would say Jackson Lloyd, probably the top target for Alabama right now, and, and it would be a big – Big deal for him. Like again, uh, on three, basically saying he's he's the top prospect in the Western United States. I think they're about to kick me out of this meeting room, so I'm going to have oh. to go. But uh, you know, that's what happens when you stop and do a podcast at a hotel you're not staying in. So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, the police we, coming? Uh, yeah, they could be coming. That that's podcast that's podcast history right there. Uh, I think we will be back tomorrow. I think I'll be available Friday morning. So let's do one in the let's morning. Let's see if we can't get that uh Jacob Pickle on the show. Ah, do we'll that tomorrow, everybody. Jimmy. We're we're gonna tell everybody that's our big surprise this week. We'll Jacob. talk to Jacob Pickle, president of Crimson Chaos. Yeah, we'll try and do that. All right, roll tight, everybody. Roll tight.